The federal government has acknowledged a dire food security situation, uh, projecting an estimated 31 million Nigerians uh, to face food crises and nutrition crises by August of 2024. I'm joined now by my guest, who is an agribusiness expert, Dr. Priz Adishafini Ayodeji. Thank you, doctor, for coming on the program today. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Uh, let me just start off with you just, you know, reacting to the data, talking about the numbers that we did hear, you know, from the Federal Minister of uh, Finance and Coordinating Minister of the Economy, Wale Idun, talking about 31 million Nigerians expected to face, you know, the, the effect of uh, food, security, or food insecurity and nutrition uh, problems. What is your thought or what are your thoughts on this assertion? Thank you very much. The figure mentioned by the Honorable Minister is even far below what is happening presently. More than that figure is already facing the, the issue, this problem of food insecurity and malnutrition in Nigeria. And when you think of or when you hear numbers like that, and you have stated that um, in reality, it could, have, it could even be more than, you know, he is projecting. But when you hear numbers like that, what comes to mind, especially thinking of um, the geographical landmass that Nigeria is blessed with? I mean, one of the social media commenters, you know, made reference to that. Nigeria is so rich with land and um, all that we are blessed with in terms of, you know, the geographical location that we are in. And yet we are finding ourselves, you know, grapple with uh, the problem of food insecurity and nutrition crisis. What comes to mind and how did we even get to this point? Thank you. What the speaker or the writer said was very, very perfect and correct. Nigeria is one of the countries in West Africa that is blessed with arable lands that can feed ourselves and feed our neighboring countries. But today, most of the activities that relate to agriculture and agribusiness have been abandoned. And in, in Nigeria today, we need to move away from agriculture and think about agribusiness so that what we have will be enough to sustain us. Because now we are not, don't have any hope of ensuring food security, not to talk of sustaining it. But there are ways and things that can be done, and it's not too late to get it done. Well, I'm glad you've stated that it is indeed not too late, you know, to find solutions to the problems that Nigeria is facing in the area of food and agriculture. But we will be touching on the solutions after the break. To stay, my guest, uh, Dr. Prince Adishafini Ayodeji is on standby.
And you're still watching Business Daily coming to you live on Trust TV. And just before the break, we started a conversation on solving Nigeria's problem of food security. And uh, like I stated before the break, the federal government had, had admitted to the their need for Nigeria to find sustainable solutions in the area of food and agriculture. And according to the Federal Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister of the Economy, about 31 million Nigerians stand, you know, uh, to stand at the verge of experiencing, you know, the, uh, the effect of food crisis by August 2024. And I still have my guest with me, who is an agribusiness expert, Dr. Pries Adishafini Ayodeji. Thank you again for coming on it's the program. Pleasure. Sir. Pleasure. And just before the break, you said something that actually did stick. You said that Nigeria should start, you know, moving away from just finding solutions in the area of agri towards agri business. Yeah. And what that makes me think is what really is the difference between you know, agriculture and agri business? Thank you very much. Agriculture generally is into science of planting, rearing for the purpose to solve a particular problem, then in a traditional way. Not considering the population and who is to buy when the farmers are going onto the farm. Farmers then, under agriculture, decide to plant what they like on a particular land. For example, a farmer that has 20 hectares of land or 5 hectares of land can plant 4 or 5 different types of crops without targeting what is its expectation as the <coughs> output and who is the targeted customer. What is the cost of doing it? All those things and in agriculture also, there are some parts of the country here in Nigeria that focus only on rainy one season farming. And presently in Nigeria, our population is just moving up geometrically. What we have, the population we had last year is not what we have this year. And for agribusiness, it's a combination of bringing business minded into the business of agri. Mm. And what do we mean by the business mindset? I'm going into this thing for business reasons. One, I must provide for my security and security of my farm. All the necessary things that make a business succeed must be provided before going into it. And before going into it, you need to determine who am I giving this to? What is the price desired between me and the person that wants to buy it? How much am I spending? How many labors do I need? How do I, what are the source of my water? All the required input, what are the sources? What are the quality? All this needs to put intact. So that when the farmer is going into a production of a particular farm produce, he knows how much he will spend on one particular hectare. And he knows what is projected as his, pro as his output. And that will determine how much it costs him or her to produce a kilo of that particular product. But doctor, some will argue that Right now, we're having, you know, conversations and debates about Nigerians even being able to, you know, sustain Nigerians when it comes to food. How much more Exporting. producing to export? What are your thoughts on, on Very that? correct. And we are not producing at the optimal level. Let me give you a case study. For example, a rice farmer on one hectare of land that is making less than three hectares 30 tons per hectare. What do you expect of such? In a situation whereby you can make up to 4 or 5 tons, and the higher the tons, tonnage of output of paddy you are able to get, the lesser your cost of production. And the population of the consumers is are more greater than what is coming out of the farm. Meaning that we are unable, because of so many factors, to produce up to the level or in paripazo with the population of the consumers. And there are ways to get this done because Nigeria is blessed and Nigerians are blessed individually, most especially for those that have passion for agribusiness. Mm. Doctor, you've said that there are ways to, you know, meet up with the target. You know, you've talked about the population growth that Nigeria is currently experiencing. I believe last I checked with the National Populations Commission, Nigeria had over 220 million in terms of population. So that also, you know, brings the concern around population explosion. Yeah. And then you've talked about means that are you know, available for Nigeria to meet up with, you know, providing, growing what we eat and growing enough for our high population. What are the solutions that you hmm. are suggesting? Thank you very much. 
the first and foremost is what is the intention of the so-called farmers we the farmers need to change our mindset either the existing or the incoming ones i used to say something agribusiness is a business mm. and we need to provide all what is required let's talk generally before we come into as a private sector driven you need to look at where is the nearest available farm land mm. what is the land space am i to do mixed cropping or mono cropping what is my economic of production where am I getting my input from? All these factors need to be considered. And the labor I want to engage, are they skilled? If they are not skilled, how do I do empower them with modern education? Because that is very, very important. When planting maize manually, there are so many of our farm plants that you ask them to drop two, two per oh, they just drop six. It does not concern them. And to every one hectare of each of these commodity or farm products have the expected population per hectare. A case study of maize. For you to have a sustainable return on investment for one hectare of maize, you need to plant nothing less than 55,000 stands on the monocropping. And you need to determine who are the users of this my maize. Am I targeting the end users or for factory purpose? If that is done, what type of breed do I need to plant? Mm. That's another thing. So many of us are planting what we are doing, what we call inbreeding. What I invested last year, instead of me to go and buy another seed from a qualified seed seller, I keep some of the harvested seeds of last year to replant. Mm. And the productivity of such will not give us the good results. Moving away, all year farming is what we should target, not seasonal farming. All year farming. Yes. And we need to look inward. Yes, having irrigation is a capital investment. And that is where the issue of financial institution needs to come in. And when we are talking about financial institution, there are some businesses that they need to specialize on and see how they can give a loan facilities that is well spread to clusters of farmers. And coming back, the only another way forward is to return back to farm settlement operation. Having our individual farm in different locations cannot feed us. In Nigeria today, each state has comparative of advantage of crop of minimum of six per state over another state because the quality of soil in abuja is not the same thing with nasarawa it's not the same thing with niger state it's not the same thing with plato state it's not the same thing with kogi state so also in kwara it's expected that we should sit down look at the comparative crop that can be grown in each of these states each of these states has senatorial districts mm. of minimum of three this is where the state government needs to come into. Now they are talking about internal IGR. They are not looking, looking from the perspective of agribusiness. And in the area of agribusiness, there are so many opportunities for state government, local government to generate IGR. How do I mean? We have so many land. The most expensive part of our business in agribusiness is land clearing. It's so capital intensive. Hiring of bulldozers, getting it cleared is a thing that a single farmer cannot face and if at all he borrowed money to pay it it cannot make the repayment until after four or five years because of the capital intensity intensity uh, the high cost of the operation of land clearing but if the state government or the local government can take the responsibility in each local government or in each senatorial district let's come together let's donate about one thousand hectares 2,000 hectares for a particular product and now bring interested youth and that is another thing he said that we use the existing farmers or we bring the interested youth we give them training because tra capacity building is another important thing that is lacking 
and it's leading to part of this food insecurity. Mm -hmm. The way we have been doing this is the way they will continue to do it. Let's change their mindset. Let them, let's, let's train their mindset towards this is my business. It is not our business. Mm. Well said, Doctor, especially, you know, where you emphasized on how, you know, we should look at what states have comparative yes. advantage over other states, especially yeah. as we're talking about internally generated revenues from, you know, the different states now. But I'd like for us to touch on something that is equally very important, and that is post-harvest losses. That is one area that, you know, most farmers would complain about, especially with how much they see that they lose, you know, after um, harvest. What can be done to change, you know, the reoccurrence of issues such as, you know, this, especially it's speaking about post-harvest losses? Before you even go into the post-harvest losses, let's talk about the harvest loss. During the harvesting period, farmers lose a lot of crops. For example, rice and maize. When, they are, when farmers are harvesting their paddy rice, they do it manually. And in the process, they lose a lot. Somebody that has not been able to make 30 tons per hectare while cutting the paddy from the straw, lose almost one ton. And what is the way forward? That is where we are looking at farm mechanization. Our individual investors can come into this, not only government, because government is there to be the guidance and give us the security. Individual investors can get all these equipments available and give it out for lease, not for gift. Even if state or federal government or local government invests on it, they should give it to an association to manage the equipment. Let's make investing equipment available to farmers. It's either as a loan, depends on the size of the farm. But the major thing before we go, go to that level is how do we go back to farm settlement operation? That is number one solution. That is one of the ways we can reduce insecurity in agri. Because a situation whereby we have 1,500 1, or 200 farmers working on the farm on a particular day, it will be so difficult for any intruder to pop into the place. And you know there will be high competition whereby I want my farm to generate this quantity. And that will brings about dedication of farmers into that project. And for the post-harvesting, after harvest, where do you keep it? There's no storage facilities for farmers. Some of them take it to their home. And you know what that means. No warehousing facilities. This is another thing. Wherever we have a farm settlement, there will be a common infrastructure to be shared. Mm -hmm. A situation whereby, if the government likes, they build it there and put it on lease. All farmers, harvest your product, we will lease a portion for you to keep and protect your crop pending your off-taker arrival. Because individual storage facilities cannot cater. What plan, uh, farmer A is producing is not even enough to feed his family. He will share it to feed his family and take the rest to the market. And how do they get the pricing? They use best judgment to, to give price. And which is one of the major why the cost of food is so expensive now. Best of judgment pricing, open market pricing. We need to change from that system. The first thing in price control, sorry, I'm just jumping to that, because That's one okay. thing leads to another. Go on, go on. Is one, what is your economic of production? What is the basis of your economic of production? Using the minimum output rate, not the maximum. From there, what is your marker? That is why, so every business aspect in Nigeria, there is standard operation procedure. What is the markup? on rice? What is the markup on maize? What is the markup on tuba? What is the markup on vegetable? There is to be a percentage of markup that will make the farmer be happy that I'm doing this business. You now add your markup to your cost of production to determine this is the barrier, this is the boundary of my selling price. That is not done. A farmer that has no bookkeeping, no good record, cannot account for how much he or she has spent what he's waiting for is how many do I have at the end of the day? One ton. Okay. How much are they selling in the open market? 1,000 per kilo. That is my price. And these are the crisis area that needs to be looked into by FCCPC if really they want to do the right thing for price control. Mm. The price control should start from the production. Moving to the middlemen, 
what is your logistic cost? And we can't determine that 100%, but there should be an average of logistics from farm to the market, to the store. And there should be a, a, a standard for holding costs, keeping those farm inputs in your warehouse for a period of so, so, so time before it gets to the processor or to the final users. There should be, and it is doable for government to say it wants to go into price control. There must be a standard that should be beneficial to the farmers, to the middlemen, and to we, the consumers. Doctor, when you talked about, you know, storage facilities, one thing that crossed my mind was, you know, the role of innovation, technological advancement in the area of agri. Where is Nigeria in that? Well, we are still growing, to be sincere. I was discussing with some group of farmers in Kwara State regarding usage of drone to capture some of our activities. Somebody was asking me, why do you need to do that? Why? Technology has gone to the level whereby you, the owner of the farm, can be monitoring your farm from your home. And if you are able to get it done rightly, you will get the best results. And technology, we are talking about, start from farm mechanization. If you are able to get a land being cleared and you pay for lease, a land being clear and the Ministry of Water Resources in that state is able to provide you with industrial bore oil that you can use at, as your substitute to rain-fed farming. A technology way of planting, a technological way of spraying your herbicide and your insecticide so that the old farm, the old crops will benefit in abundance. If all this can be implemented and is doable, it is just we need to do more of advocacy and capacity building for the farmers to change from their old style to the modern style of food production. If that is not done, we still continue in this in food insecurity in Nigeria. What sort of collaborations have you had so far, especially with the federal government? And I did notice that you have not touched on the elephant in the room, which is the problem of insecurity. Yeah. Insecurity over time has been, you know, said to be one of the major causes of the rising um, food insecurity across the nation. Where is Nigeria currently in addressing its problem of uh, food, of insecurity generally? Well, insecurity has been an issue from DC Memoria, most especially when it comes to the issue of farming. But number one thing I think we need to look inward with is how do we have a roundtable discussion? They have been doing it, and I believe one day we will get there. Between the livestock, especially the cow breeder and the arable farmer in each community. There's one thing that happened some days, some years back. The community uh, Katuriaras believe and understand that they are not the people coming to destroy or cause havoc. That they are, it's only the stranger. Okay, how do we get these strangers curtailed? To every farm, as a businessman, I used to say, how do you secure your business? Mm. Number one thing is, what provision did you provide for your farm? Mm. As far as security is concerned, wherever you have to, to every challenge is there is a solution, there is opportunity. Wherever you have a farm settlement, the community youth have opportunity of engage, engagement. In what area? Engaging them as security for that farm because they know the terrain of their community. How many of us are doing that? In the village where they are, they, there is no access of road for any eventuality for security agency to rush down, we should be able to have our own community security that will be employed. It's an extra cost, yes, but it can form part of our economic of production because we know we are we own the investment. We don't leave the aspect of security to government alone. We use the opportunity of having our farm in a community to engage the youth or the local hunters as our security people. What is their job to give alarm? of eventuality that is about to happen rather than to just leave our farm open we come to the farm in the morning by 4 p.m we close we go home leave it to god to be watching for us 
But if you know we are closing by four, let's have security that will be patrolling. In case there is any eventuality, he will be able to quickly call for enforcement than for us to just abandon the farm. Mm. It's quite unfortunate it has affected me that I'm talking about it today. It has affected me. And since I engage my own security at the farm, I think it has minimized the occurrence of such. Mm. Therefore, I'm advising our co-farmers outside there. One, it's not easy for scattered farm to get security. But let's come together as a cluster farm. Okay, you are maize farmers. Maize farmers in this local government has 20,000 hectares of land. That particular place is known for maize. For rice farmers, in this local government, we have 5,000 hectares of land. For those that want to go into commercial, but if you want to do your own for your own consumption, no problem. Because common infrastructure benefit is what we assist farmers to reduce their cost of production. Mm -hmm. Without that, it's always a dick. So you're advocating for cluster farming, farming for commercial purposes? Yes, to sustain, to ensure and sustain our food security in Nigeria. Well said, Doctor. I have been speaking with Dr. Prince Adishafini Ayodeji, who is an agribusiness business expert, and he has spoken extensively on how to solve Nigeria's food insecurity challenges. Thank you, Doctor, for all the insight you've reeled out on today's edition of the program. It's a pleasure. Well, this is where we draw the curtains on Business Daily, coming to you live on Trust Television. Join the conversation on social media and let us hear your thoughts. How can Nigeria solve the rising food insecurity crisis? And like I stated before, the Federal Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister of the Economy, Wale Adun, has come out to say that about 31 million Nigerians stand a chance of you know, facing problems around food insecurity by August 2024. But we will stop here for today. My name is Chiamaka Nendu. Thank you for watching and bye for now.